changed everything in my life. Uh, when, when I was in depression due to the loss of my mother and little brother with the cancer, uh, I started drinking alcohol like I don't even think in in Russia and in Poland they can drink that much. Uh, I started doing drugs, smoking, and doing all kind of stuff, and I ended up like going to sleep at 7 a.m., maybe 8 a.m., uh, waking up at like 1 p.m. and just going back to work and taking some more drugs just to be able to function and just spiraling like that for quite some time. What got you out of it? What was what was the kick or the sudden... Was there a sudden switch that just went that made you change? Uh, <laughs> there was a couple of switches, but one, it's really the, the biggest... Uh, the most emotional story I can ever talk about is... So after two years of depression and doing the same, doing drugs, not caring about what I eat, drink and sleep and and stuff. Uh, I ended up one night so drunk and, well, we can call that a morning, uh, so drunk and so wasted that I came home and took all my clothes from the floor and put them in the washing machine, washed them, and in the washing machine was my passport. Now, for most people, that would not be a big issue. But for me, living in China, <laughs> things are a bit more complicated here as a foreigner. So I ended up, I I'm going to make the, the story quite short, but I ended up homeless in Hong Kong for three weeks because it was holiday for the for the embassy and the, the consulate. So I had to wait that the holidays get over and stuff. So it was just a big drama for nothing much. I, I did not have much money left because I had just started one of my business, which failed, of course. And so I basically ended up homeless for about almost three weeks in Hong Kong. And what made me realize that I had to change and I had the power to change was not even being homeless in Hong Kong. It was on the last day of me being homeless. And during those three weeks, I was whining about my situation. I was complaining. I was negative, 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 constantly uh, bashing on everything else. It was never my fault. It was not me. It was the world. The world was against me. It's just unfair. And on my last day, I've got 13 or 14 Hong Kong dollars left in my pocket. I already bought my bus ticket to go back to Shenzhen. So I'm like, okay, I know I'm going home tonight. I'm going to get some food. And on my way to go to the 7-Eleven, get some food, uh, I see uh, another homeless guy, but who's homeless for quite a lot longer than me because I see him from quite afar and I see that he's got a hole Ooh. in his stomach. He hasn't ate for, I was guessing, probably six months. Oh like he really was carved in. And so I looked at the guy, I looked at my 14 Hong Kong dollar and I looked at the guy and I'm like, I'm going home tonight. I know I will have food there. I can give him. So I went and bought a sandwich and a bottle of water. And uh, I just get out, go offer him the, the sandwich and the, the bottle of water. And he said, okay, but at one condition, you sit with me and you give me your story. Oh, wow. I'm like, sure thing. And so I just explained to him that my mom and my little brother passed away and that I I was just very depressed and it was hard. My life was hard. My situation was hard. Everything was so bad. The entire universe was, com was fighting against me. And even though he's been there for quite some time, 
he's still very understanding and he is very friendly. He is he's having a lot of empathy for me and he's very very caring and he he's just trying to comfort me while I share my story. And then I'm like, okay, so you know my story. How about you? Yeah. And then he explains to me that in his country, there was war about three, three or four years prior to that. There was war, and he was a soldier, and he was with like 10 people, and those 10 people died from a bomb. Oof. He was the only survivor, and he should have go back to his military base, like a soldier would have. But he seen all of his friends dead on the floor and he was like, I can't do that anymore. Wow, I can't. Gosh. Yeah. And so he just ran away from his country. He crossed the borders illegally without his passport, without anything. He had only a, a few bucks in his pocket and he ended up on a boat, illegally of course, uh, crossing to Hong Kong and arriving in Hong Kong with no passport, nothing. And he had been surviving there for over six months. Oh my gosh. And while he was telling me his story, I was like, whoa, that's really not cool. That's hard. That's painful. And then he was explaining to me that his family was still back home and had no, not much news. He has been able to contact them every now and then via email with the free internet here and there when he can connect, but not very easy. And while he tells his story, I'm still eating my own story and being all grumpy about my stuff. And then it's time for me to go get the bus. I wish him well. I thank him for his story. And then I go in the bus. I sit in the bus. And something was not sitting right with mm -hmm. me. I was in the bus. I was going home, so I should have been ecstatic. And I was like, that's not right. Something isn't right. Something isn't right. And I start pondering. I, I'm alone, and I'm in that bus for like about an hour and a half. So what do you want me to do? I'm thinking and thinking and thinking. And I start realizing wait a minute, you know what's not right? It's that guy's story is not right. That guy hasn't had a choice. Mm -hmm. It was either dying or going back to the army and dying. Uh, that's not really a choice. His family is far away, but it was not his choice to abandon them. He had to run away to just survive. And then that reflecting on me was like, you dumbass, you made all those choices. Yes, your mom and your brother died from cancer, but nobody forced you to take drugs. You didn't need that to survive. Nobody forced you to drink that much. You didn't need that to survive. And so I started questioning everything in my life because, well, if some people are not as lucky as I am, why am I destroying mm. my luck? And so from there, I was open to change and to new ways. And I got in touch with somebody in my city who's just launching a brand of essential oil in, in the city and in China, basically. And she was promoting that you could cook with essential oil. Me being a chef at the time, struggling with my business, I was like, okay, two things. That's dangerous. Cooking with essential oil might be poisonous. So maybe I should be educating them, telling them not to eat that stuff. And if they have a good explanation for that, maybe that could be good for my business, being a difference. And so I went and meet with them and they explained to me that those essential oils are 100% pure, not like 
the claim of the supermarket mm -hmm. type essential oil, but they are tested. Uh, five different tests, no, six different tests now uh, on three different layers. So one in the country where the oils are sourced, once when they arrive in the States, and then once when they are bottled. So they are just tested for purity because they are used for therapeutic uh, uses. So I was like, okay, so that could be good for my business. And then I started using those essential oils and hanging around that community of health-minded people, which I was not at the time. I was still smoking, drinking, and stuff. And then an opportunity came, and I was using those essential oil with my cooking classes, and my skin started clearing up because once you spend three years taking all kinds of drugs, alcohol, smoking cigarettes, and not eating right, your body has a hard time processing mm -hmm. everything. So after like a month of eating those essential oil because I was cooking with it to just get familiar with how it works. I see my skin starting to clear and I see that my energy level is a bit better and I see that my mood, weirdly enough, has improved. So I'm just more and more interested in using those essential oil for myself. And I got contacted by a friend who said, hey, hey that place is looking for a chef. Uh, just for the summer, it's just near the beach and there is some surf. Maybe you could be interested to, and because my business was failing anyway at the time, I was like, well, that could pay the rent for a couple months. Sure, I could do the business when I come back in the city in between and I can just uh, pay the rent for that. So I went there and I spent seven months living at the beach Wow. Uh, detoxing myself, so no, no more alcohol or almost no more alcohol. We had every now and then a party for the for the restaurant to make more money, but almost no drinking, eating healthier, and of course waking up at like four five forty five in the morning because we need to open the surf shack at at six, and I was literally thrilled to wake up early for the first time in my life as a teenager I was super excited about it uh, because I could go and surf so I started changing just the time I wake up and then the food I eat because you're awake early in the morning you can go on until 3, 4, 5 a.m. Mm, yeah. It's not possible but he doesn't want to do that so you start eating differently, sleeping differently and then after that period of basically detoxing and, well, during that period, I've learned how to meditate, not through meditation classes, not through yogi, not through people, but just what do you do when you're sitting on a surfboard with your feet in the water being cooked by the sun for 45 minutes waiting for a wave? Well, true. you've got a lot of time to connect with yourself, with your feelings, with nature and with just everything. So without realizing it, I was meditating a lot, which has helped me become more calm and more, more understanding of my feelings. So then I came back in the city and then... After a couple of weeks of being in the city, I just could not stay there mm. because too many of my friends at the time were still in the drug, alcohol, party, party, party. And I was like, okay, I'm <laughs> just going to go live a bit farther back there. So it, if I come to the city, I will be intentional on coming. Mm. And because I don't have much uh, transportation, I have to get back home by like 11. So that I put myself in jail just to be sure to to stick to it. And so I did for another year. I just focused on building, rebuilding myself, detoxing myself while living in the city. And thanks to the support to that amazing community and that health coach that has been just helping me for free. Uh, and thanks to that essential oil company that just made that possible. Uh, I just learned that my food was partially responsible 
of my depression mm -hmm. and bad decision because when you eat too much sugar, processed food and stuff, your gut bacteria doesn't work properly, so it affects the way you think and your mood. And so I've been fascinated about it. And for the past three years, I've been digging a lot into understanding that more because if I, being a chef, being trained about nutrition, was not aware of that, how many people out there don't know? that what they eat is making them think bad. And so I just started digging and digging and that community being very resourceful has been educating me. I'm now on the process of being a certified aromatherapist. Uh, the next process will be a certified nutritionist. Oh, wow. Uh, and I just completely switched my life over. So I just uh, stopped my cooking business because that was not anymore what I what I felt drawn to do. Mm -hmm. I felt like it's it's my duty now that I understand that to share with people like me who had no education on emotional intelligence on uh, food and emotional uh, reaction after doing a couple of whole thirty diets. I was amazed that an ice cream could trigger tantrum. So eating specific type, the specific brands of ice cream, not sure what they put inside, bring up tantrum after like two or three hours that I eat it. So mm -hmm. I started realizing that if I'm suffering from that just by eating an ice cream, who else doesn't know that? Who else is suffering through that? And who else doesn't know how to manage their emotion? Because I grew up with a military father, so it's not very welcome to be mm. crying, and it's not very welcome to talk too much about the feelings, so it's like suck it up and keep going. And so that's what really led me to be making all those bad decisions. And so I decided to go as a, as a coach. I don't like the word coach because everybody calls themselves coach. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I'm an essential oil and basically health and wellness coach. Uh, I'm being paid by the company uh, uh, through sharing the essential oil, which allows me to not charge people, so to do the same as my mentor did for me, and reach out to people for free. So I'm sharing all the knowledge I'm constantly acquiring to help people for free to take back their their life and that that's basically how i basically switch everything in my life i change my circle of friend i change my way of thinking my way of eating sleeping exercising i used to hate exercise literally and now i wake up and it's the first thing i do in the morning i roll out of bed and i make a hundred push-up I, I do a bit of cardio and then I do some meditation. Then I read. So that that's I'm sad that it took me to lose my family and to almost kill myself through drugs and alcohol to realize that. But I'm happy that I've been able to flip my life over. And I'm really grateful that it happened to me because mm -hmm. I've been strong enough to overcome it. And instead of suiciding or just killing myself through drugs, I flipped everything and now I am able to help other people. That's incredible. I mean, what an incredible history because you've there's, there's so much you've covered and you say it in such a, in a really humble way as well in the sense that there were so many paths to choose from and you managed to choose the right one, which is not, it's no mean feat, it's a difficult thing to do. And that's, that's yeah. awesome. Tell me, at the moment, so where do you see yourself? Where do you want to be in like five years' time? What do you want to have built up around you? I really want to be leading a huge team of young entrepreneurs. And I want to be able to have helped those young entrepreneurs to have a flip their life same as I did. Hopefully catching that earlier so that they don't have to go through as bad as I did. 
Uh, my goal would be to have a team, a global team of humanitarian, health-minded entrepreneurs, basically. So I'm working with a community in Uganda uh, who takes care of street kids and teenage moms that, that are homeless and that are just struggling to go through life. And the, the founder of that team was also homeless and a street kid and a drug addict. And he made the change and he made the change for the better and he's helping empowering his community not to go through the same. And so I'm just literally building a, a community around that, around helping others not making the same mistake as we did. And what motivates you? What, what drives you? Uh, Every single time. So I'm not going to take it as a simple driver. It's I can't allow myself to go down for the simple reason that every single time I'm going down emotionally, I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling, oh, my life is not going the way I want. I remember that guy, that guy in the park in Hong Kong who had no choice. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You've got the power to change that. You don't like it, get moving, get moving. You have the obligation to share with people who like you are struggling. You have to do it. And that really is pushing me and constantly waking me up at like 5.30 to 5.45 every day because I have to. I just can't stay in my bed all night long and spending 12 hours sleeping when I know that I have the power just through what I know. I don't, I don't need to be perfect, but just through what I know and through what I've gone through, I have the power to help people that are out there that don't know yet what I know. So I feel responsible for all of those people and I do feel that it's my mission to do it. And that's really what drives me. And what would you say to all those people out there or people who were in your situation? What would you say to them? Or what are the first three things you tell them to do to try and help them? Meditate. That would be the first. Exercise and read. Because hmm. if you... Do if you exercise, you will most likely eat better food because by exercising, if you eat the wrong food, you're going to have pain in your joints. If you meditate, you will be more able to understand your feelings and instead of letting them control you, you will be able to balance them. And then uh, wait, sorry, lost reading. my thought. Reading, so I'm going to ask you a good question after, after that one about yeah. that. Reading. Well, if you're intentional on your reading, the amount of knowledge that you can acquire over a period of as simple as a year is just amazing. I hated reading when I first met my mentor. And she said, well, you've tried your way. It doesn't work. Why don't you try my way? <laughs> What's that? Fair enough. And she gave me a book and I ha it took me a month to go through it. And it was Think and Grow Rich. And it was hard to read. For me, being a French native speaker from Belgium, having to read in English was a bit complicated. But then I went through it and I realized it was exactly the book I needed at the time because I was just coming back from being homeless in Hong Kong understanding that I have the choice. And so the way I think might change the way I live. So it, it, it had a good impact on me and it forced me to want more books. And so in, in three years time with all that I read, I'm a completely different person. I'm able to lift people up now. I. I used to be depressed, alcoholic, negative, doing everything the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And now I'm able to help 
people that are going through depression to just smile and feel better. So just through reading and through meditation and through exercise, those things just change your life. Amazing. And what are your top three books, the books that had the most impact on you? Uh, the top three books. So the first that uh, that really helped me was the Fifth Agreement. It's from the Toltec series, Don Miguel Ruiz. Okay. The Fifth Agreement is a bit harder to find, but I prefer it because it's less about religion and it's it combined the, the four agreements. Because uh, the, the first book was the Four Toltec Agreement, but I, I read the fifth instead of the first one, and the fifth combined all of the, the five agreements, so it covers everything with less religion, so it was just perfect for me. Uh, so that one was really good. Uh, the Slight Edge, the Slight Edge was just transformational, because... I used to be thinking like everybody of my generation, we're used to click and have the result mm. right now, right there. And the slight edge just teaches you that just do 1% better every day. Just doesn't matter. You're depressed? Okay, just get up. Smile for five minutes in front of the mirror, even if you don't believe it, and then go back to bed. Mm. That's better than the day before. And just small incrementation, you will accomplish huge results over time. And that really has changed everything, like exercising. I used not to exercise, and now I don't see myself spending three days without exercise because I need it. Mm. it I, I know that it changed the way I feel, it changed the way I look, it changed the way I carry myself, and it just... It changes everything because the way you, you position yourself changes the way you think about yourself as well. And so just those small exercises, I, I don't exercise for long. I spend five to ten minutes maximum a day. So it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be hard. Mm -hmm. But just that, the right diet with the right books. The third book... Third book is hard to choose because... There are so many that I really, really love. Uh, I would say Elon Musk from Ashley Vance. Oh, okay. Just to go for bigger thinking. Yeah. Because most of us are used to be, okay, we're, we're going to just do that because that's what we know. And if I had stuck to what I knew, I would not be where I am at, at right now. Mm -hmm. I would still be cooking and I would not be helping people. And that for me is a big, big problem. So I really encourage people to try to think a bit bigger. And this book really has helped me. Fantastic. Those are absolutely amazing books. And lastly, what does, what does success mean? to you. So how would you define success? Uh, the best way I could define success is being happy to do what I do. Doesn't matter what it is. So if it's for someone else, it might be cooking. And that's wonderful. If that's what wakes you up with a smile on your face, that's perfect. Uh, if it's being an astronaut, then just go for it. But don't let the must and do's stop you. Just being being free to do what I want to do. I'm far from being rich, but I've got enough for me to pay the rent, the food, and to do what I love. And for me, that's success. Mm. The, the more money I make, the more people I will be able to help but I don't need tons of money to be happy or successful. All I need is to wake up excited by what I'm going to do.